Hi, I'm Andrea Owen, Corporate Dietitian from the Nestle Healthcare Nutrition Division of Nestle Health Science. Today I'm going to introduce you to the Compact Standard Pump. I'll show you how to use it, how to set it up, the accessories that go along with it, and also we'll go through some maintenance and troubleshooting. The Compact Standard Pump is to be used for enteral use only, and it must not be used for parenteral use or IV use. This is a compact standard pump. You'll see on the front that there's many buttons and windows, but we're going to come back to this a little bit later. We're going to start by looking at the back of the pump. Here you'll find the serial number. It's important to take note of this for your own records as well as Nestle's records. You'll also see the power cord here. We highly recommend that you plug it in at all times, as although the pump has a long battery life, you'll get the greatest longevity out of the pump if you keep it plugged in to a power source. Here you can see there's the roller clamp to attach it to the IV pole. And here is the alarm volume control. But we're going to come back to this a little bit later. On the side of the pump, you'll find some directions for use and setting up. And as well as that, a laminated sheet comes along with the pump that has simple directions for use as well as troubleshooting. Features to point out on the front of the pump are the drip chamber brackets, the flow sensors which are located behind the brackets, the drip chamber guide, the safety bracket, the rotor and the tubing guide. Okay. Features to point out on the giving sets are the Spike Right Plus connector, the roller clamp, the drip chamber, the silicon tubing, the Y port for medications or water flushes, and the feeding tip. Before you start to feed your patient, ensure that you wash your hands thoroughly, as infection control is our main priority. Once you've washed your hands, we're ready to start setting up the feed. There are two methods for feeding your patient the decanting method and the ready to hang method. With the decanting method, you'll require a vinyl bag like this. You'll notice that it has a giving set attached to the bag. You simply unscrew the lid, pour in the feed and screw the lid back on tightly. Some examples of products you can use are our Australian made range. Another way of feeding your patient is the ready to hang method. Nestle Healthcare Nutrition has a range of ready to hang feeds for your patient, such as Fiber Source HN, which I'm going to be using for today's demonstration. These ready to hang products come in one litre soft packed or flat packs. With the ready to hang method, you'll need to use a giving set. Make sure that you shake the bag well before use. Take the cap off and turn it over to make sure that there's no leaks. If the bag is leaking, do not use this bag. With the giving set, you'll need to make sure that the roller clamp is engaged tightly, the Y port is closed, and the cap is on the feeding tip, just to make sure that you don't have any messes while you're priming the feed. Take the cap off the Spike Right Plus connector end, spike the bag, and screw it on tightly. We now have the pump attached to the IV pole and the feed hanging above the pump. To prime the line, we're going to do this via gravity. So simply place the drip chamber into the drip chamber socket and let the tubing hang loosely. Ensure there's no kinks or knots. So to prime the line, we're going to take the cap off the feeding tip, ensure that the Y port is closed, and now we can disengage the roller clamp. Once the feed has reached the end of the line, the line has been primed. Now that the line has been primed, we need to finish setting up the tubing so that we can start feeding the patient. 
This involves gently pulling on the silicon tubing, placing it behind the safety bracket and filing the tubing away. We can now finish setting up the regime to feed your patient. On the front of the pump, you'll see various windows and buttons. We'll now run through what each one means. Here we have the infusion rate. This is the rate of feed the patient will be having. The window next to it says volume delivered, dose limit. This allows you to find out how much feed has been delivered at any time. The dose limit is required when the patient is having bolus feeds. In the middle are the increase and decrease buttons which allows us to set the rate of feed or the dose limit. To the right of that, we have the dose limit set and total reset. Dose limit set is when you need to set a volume for bolus feeds. Total reset is to clear the memory of the pump. Underneath are the on and off buttons. And next to this is the run hold button, which allows us to start and stop the feed at any time. On the bottom are the indicators to alert us to any problems with the pump such as low battery or problems with the line. To feed the patient, you'll need to firstly turn the pump on. You'll hear that this noise is quite loud, so you can control the volume on the back of the pump. Having turned on the pump, you can see that the infusion rate is set to 70 mils per hour. To change the infusion rate, we simply use the up or down arrows to set it at the desired rate. For the purpose of today's demonstration, we're going to set it at 60 mils per hour. You can see that this has now been set in the infusion rate window. The, the other window that is flashing here says 14. This means that the pump has been used by another patient and 14 mils of feed has been infused. We need to clear this by pressing total reset and that will bring it back to zero. When a patient is on a continuous feed, you need to press dose limit set and ensure that this is on zero. Here it's set to 240, so we're gonna bring that all the way back down to zero. With the infusion rate set as per dietitian's regime and the dose limit set, we are now ready to feed the patient. To do that, we simply press run hold. Once we've pressed run hold, you'll notice that the rotor starts to turn. If you look here at the drip chamber, you'll see the feed dripping into the chamber. The sensors located behind the chamber are controlling the rate of the feed. You'll see that there is some feed starting to gather, but this is fine. If the chamber gathers too much feed, there is potential for it to block the view of the sensors, which count the drip rate. Please refer to the troubleshooting chapter of this DVD if this occurs. If the patient is being fed by bolus feeds, we need to set up the pump slightly differently. As per the dietitian's regime, again, we set the infusion rate at 60 mils per hour. In the dose limit window, we need to press total reset to ensure that the memory is cleared. Then we press dose limit set, and in the case of a 237 mil Tetra Pak, we need to increase this volume to 240 mils. With the infusion rate set at 60 mils per hour and the dose limit set at 240 mils, the patient will receive 240 mils of feed at a rate of 60 mils per hour. With both windows set up, we are ready to press run hold and start feeding the patient bolus feeds. We will now run through some troubleshooting for the pump. You can see at the front of the pump there are four lights. When the pump is plugged into an electrical source, such as now, no lights will be on. If we were working off a battery, this battery light will be on. The pump has a capacity to run for eight hours when the feeding rate is set at 100 mils per hour. Fifteen minutes before the battery life is exceeded, the low battery light will come on 
and the pump will alarm to indicate that it needs to be attached to a power source as soon as possible. The pump takes 12 hours to recharge from complete discharge. The next light is the occlusion empty light. This light will come on and the pump will alarm when there is a problem with the actual feeding setup. If the occlusion empty alarm starts to sound, the patient will no longer be receiving feed and you'll notice that this rotor is no longer turning. The occlusion empty alarm will sound because the sensors here at the top of the pump are no longer counting drips of feed. So there is a problem somewhere along the feeding setup as the feed is not running past the sensors. There are a few reasons why this alarm may sound. The first reason is that the chamber of feeding may be empty. In this case, there is plenty of feed. However, if the feed has been decanted into a vinyl bag, we may have run out of feed. The second reason is that the pump is not in an upright or vertical position, or not clamped properly to the pole. The third reason is that the roller clamp may still be engaged. We need to disengage the roller clamp to ensure the feed is running through the line and past the drip sensors. The fourth reason is that there is a kink in the tubing. Any kink can be removed by simply pinching the tubing to remove the kink. Once the kink is removed, the feed will be able to run past the sensors and the issue will be resolved. The fifth reason may be that there's a kink in the silicon tubing that goes around the rotor. Although this is a different material to the rest of the tubing, it can also get kinks. So again, just pinch the tubing and remove the kink. This will allow the feed to continue to run through the line. The sixth reason is that the pump has been on hold for more than two and a half minutes. Press run hold to stop the alarm. And the final reason for the pump alarming may be due to a problem around the actual feeding site. Make sure that the tubing is connected properly into the patient. Once that is checked, the actual site may be cause for further investigation. The fourth indicator light says dose complete. If this light comes on, the pump will alarm to indicate that the dose is complete and the patient has received the required amount of feed. If it's a continuous feed, the dose limit needs to be set at zero. So simply press dose limit set and then run it back down to zero with the down arrow. Another feature of the compact standard pump is the free flow alarm. When this alarm sounds, the letters FRE in the top left display window will appear and FLO in the top right display window. If this occurs, press run hold immediately and check for the following. Okay. Firstly, the pump may have not been loaded correctly making use of the safety bracket, in which case there is potential for it to come loose. Ensure that the giving set is correctly loaded around the rotor and clicked into the safety bracket with the tubing filed away. Also, the silicon tubing can sometimes stretch over time making it possible for it to dislodge around the rotor. The feed will then be free to flow at an uncontrolled rate. To alert the user, the pump will sound. A new giving set will then be required. Another reason why the free flow alarm might sound is that the drip chamber has become too full or too dirty. This means that there is feed from the top to the bottom. This then blocks the view of the sensors so that they can't actually count the drips as it runs past. The sensors are very sensitive, so it's important to have a clean drip chamber, as is the case here. Some feed at the bottom of the chamber is fine, but if it fills up to the sensors, it will cause the pump to alarm. If this occurs, remove the giving set and replace with a new one. The best way to ensure that the drip chamber remains clear is to put the drip chamber into the pump right from the start when priming the food. The pump remains the property of Nestle Healthcare Nutrition and costs approximately $900. We request that you ensure that the pump is serviced yearly and cleaned regularly as per the operation manual and in line with infection control procedures at your facility. Nestle Healthcare Nutrition will service the pumps. The pump requires a service every 12 months to ensure Australian standards are met. A53551, which refers to the manufacturer's manual requirements, and calibration frequency A53760, which requires that electrical equipment is safety tested at a minimum of every 12 months. The date of the last inspection or service and the date of the next service will appear on a sticker on the machine.
If the service date has passed, please contact your Nestle Healthcare Nutrition representative to organise for a replacement pump to be sent so that you can return the pump that is due for service. When returning the pump for service, please clean the pump as facilities that return the pump in an unfit state will receive an invoice for the cleaning of the pump. To clean the pump, first of all remove it from its electrical source. It's a good idea to keep the pump clean by wiping off any spills as they might occur. You can do this by taking a bucket of soapy water, immersing a dishcloth and wiping across the front of the pump. Be careful of the area where the sensors are located. When it comes to cleaning the sensors, you need to take a cotton bud and immerse it in isopropyl alcohol and very gently wipe the sensors from the top. Because they are so sensitive, we need to be careful not to poke and prod in any way. By cleaning the sensors and pump, you will ensure that the pump meets infection control guidelines of the facility. Another thing to remember when cleaning the pump is to turn it around and look at the hole just above the volume control button. Often the feeding tip is placed in this hole while the tubing is not connected to the patient. Putting the feeding set into the pump like this can cause feed located at the end of the tube to drip down into the pump and affect the me mechanics of the pump. Please avoid putting the giving set into the pump in any way. Please follow the infection control guidelines for your facility. However, the compact pump may be disinfected with isopropyl alcohol. If these guidelines are followed, the machine will continue to comply with the required standards. Thank you for your time and attention today. At Nestle Healthcare Nutrition, we'd like to be of ongoing service to you. If you have any further questions about the pump or our range of tube feeds, please contact your Nestle Healthcare Nutrition representative. Thank you.